Hello everyone, welcome back. In cryptography, the idea of multiplicative inverse is inevitable. And that is why an exclusive lecture is created for you to help you understand the basics of multiplicative inverse under modular arithmetic. Why waiting? Let's start the outcomes first. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to Outcome number 1, we will know about the multiplicative inverse. Outcome number 2, we will understand multiplicative inverse under modular arithmetic. It means numbers with mod n. And outcome number 3, we will determine whether there exists a multiplicative inverse for a number under modular arithmetic or not. Before diving into what is multiplicative inverse under modular arithmetic, let's understand the basics of multiplicative inverse. Let's take the number 5. So when you have a number 5, when that number is multiplied by its inverse, then we get the result as 1. So it's clear that 1 by 5 is the multiplicative inverse of number 5. So it's clear that when you have a number a, then 1 by a is the multiplicative inverse for number a. So that a, when it is multiplied by its inverse, which is 1 by a, will give 1 as the result. So I am referring this 1 by a as the multiplicative inverse. So this is the basic idea behind multiplicative inverse. But the real challenge comes when modular arithmetic is involved. Say when we are dealing with modular arithmetic, that is when we have a number mod n, then the multiplicative inverse concept will be different. Say if you have a number a, when that number a is multiplied by its inverse, when the multiplication of a and a inverse, when this value is divided by n, we will get the remainder as 1. So this is what the idea of multiplicative inverse under modular arithmetic operations. We have already seen this example previously. 5 is the number, 1 by 5 is the multiplicative inverse. So obviously 5 multiplied by 1 by 5 will be 1, isn't it? So for the number 5, always 1 by 5 is the multiplicative inverse. But when you are finding multiplicative inverse under mod n, there cannot be a fixed number. For example, the multiplicative inverse for 2 mod 5 is different and the multiplicative inverse for 2 mod 7 is different. You may be thinking like you are going to find the multiplicative inverse for 2 only. But please note, it's not simply 2, it's 2 mod 5 and 2 mod 7. So the multiplicative inverse for 2 mod 5 is going to be a different number and the multiplicative inverse for 2 mod 7 may be a different number. We need to have an understanding on this. Let's understand things clearly now. Let's say there is a number 3. Now we are going to find the multiplicative inverse of 3. It is 1 by 3 obviously when it is a normal number. But when modular arithmetic is involved, mod 5, right? So what is the multiplicative inverse for 3 mod 5? That's the question is actually. So we are required to find the multiplicative inverse of 3 mod 5. Not simply 3, it's 3 mod 5. So what do you mean by this? I already told you when you have a number, when that number is multiplied by its inverse, we will get 1 as the remainder when this product is divided by n. So similarly, when we have a number here 3, when this 3 is multiplied by its inverse, then the whole result that is this product, when it is divided by 5, we should get 1 as the remainder. Let's try the number 1. 3 into 1 is 3. So 3, when it is divided by 5, we get 3 as the remainder. So, 1 is not the multiplicative inverse for 3. Let's try with 2. 3 into 2. 3 into 2 is 6. So, this side we have 6. When 6 is divided by 5, we get 1 as the remainder. So, 2 is the multiplicative inverse of 3 mod 5 or 3 is the multiplicative inverse for 2 mod 5. So, it's clear that for 3 mod 5, the multiplicative inverse is 2. Let's say we have a number 2. And we are required to find the multiplicative inverse of 2 mod 11. So what's the idea? When this side is divided by 11, we should get 1 as the remainder. What is there in this side? It's the product. So 2 is multiplied by which number? We will get 1 as the remainder when this side is divided by 11. Let's try with 1. 2 into 1 is 2. 2 when it is divided by 11, we get 2 only as the remainder. Let's try 2. 2 into 2 is 4. No. 2 into 3, 6, no. 2 into 4, 8, no. 2 into 5, 10, no. 2 into 5 is what? 10. 10 when it is divided by 11, we get 10 as the remainder or minus 1. But we need plus 1, right? So let's try with 6. So 2 into 6 is 12. 
12 when it is divided by 11 we get 1 as the remainder so the multiplicative inverse of 2 mod 11 is 6 let's see one more number 4 is multiplied by what number we get 1 as the remainder under mod 5 in other words what's the multiplicative inverse of 4 mod 5 i request you to pause this video for a while and find out what's the multiplicative inverse for the number 4 mod 5 i hope you are done let me reveal the answer for this so 4 when it is multiplied by 4 we get 16 this 16 when it is divided by 5 we get 1 as the remainder so 4 is the multiplicative inverse for 4 mod 5 do we have a multiplicative inverse for this 5 when it is multiplied by its inverse we should get 1 as the remainder when this whole side is divided by 10 just try here 5 into 1 5 into 1 is what 5 so 5 when it is divided by 10 we get 5 as the remainder let's try with 2 5 into 2 is 10 10 when it is divided by 10 we get 0 as the remainder not 1 when you try 3 we get 5 as the remainder when you try 4 you get 0 as the remainder so in this case you will never get a multiplicative inverse if you start applying all the numbers do you agree with me you know why it is so because this 5 and 10 are not relatively prime so multiplicative inverse exists only when this number and this number are relatively prime to each other under modular arithmetic so in this case 3 and 5 are relatively prime to each other and that is why we have a multiplicative inverse here similarly when you take this number 2 and 11 so 2 and 11 are relatively prime to each other in other words gcd of 2 and 11 is 1 and that is why there exists a multiplicative inverse for 2 mod 11 Similarly, there exists a multiplicative inverse for 4 mod 5 because 4 and 5 are relatively prime to each other. In other words, GCD of 4, 5 is 1 and that's why there exists a multiplicative inverse. If the GCD of two different numbers is not 1, then it means they are not relatively prime to each other. In such cases, we will never have a multiplicative inverse. So, in this example, we can clearly say that 5 mod 10 will not have a multiplicative inverse. You know why? Because 5 and 10 are not relatively prime to each other. The GCD of 5 comma 10 is 5 and hence we can say that 5 mod 10 does not have a multiplicative inverse. So in the initial part of this lecture, I told you the multiplicative inverse of 2 is 1 by 2. But the multiplicative inverse of 2 mod 5 and the multiplicative inverse of 2 mod 7 are different. That's what I told you, it's not simply 2, it's 2 mod 5 and 2 mod 7. Let's understand that now. See here, the multiplicative inverse of 2 mod 5 is 3. Why? 2 when it is multiplied by 3, we get 6. Right, so 6 when it is divided by 5, we get 1 as the remainder. So the multiplicative inverse of 2 mod 5 is 3. But the multiplicative inverse for 2 mod 7 is 4. You know why? 2 into 4 is 8. 8 when it is divided by 7, we get 1 as the remainder. Now, if you try 3, 2 into 3 is what? 6. So, 2 when it is divided by 3, we get 6 as the remainder. 6 mod 7 or minus 1, isn't it? 3 is not the multiplicative inverse here, where 4 is the multiplicative inverse for 2 mod 7. And that is why I told you, multiplicative inverse always vary based on this number, that is the modular number. If you are asked to find the multiplicative inverse for smaller numbers, you can easily start from 1 if 1 is a multiplicative inverse or 2 or 3 and you can go ahead and do that. Think if the numbers are big or the prime number is a big prime number. Then obviously you can't manually go and try this. Let's say if the multiplicative inverse is 40,095. Do you think manually trying from 1 to 40,095 is easy for you? So obviously, we need some algorithms to help us to find the multiplicative inverse easily. The algorithm is the extended Euclidean algorithm. In the coming lectures, I will solve some problems for finding the multiplicative inverse using extended Euclidean algorithm. And that's it guys. I hope now you know about the multiplicative inverse. And we also have understood about multiplicative inverse mod n. And we also have determined whether there exists a multiplicative inverse for a number and a modular arithmetic or not. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching.